नमस्कार क्लास आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू चैप्टर नंबर टू क्लास नाइन जोग्राफी फिजिकल फीचर्स ऑफ इंडिया इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स लाइक द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिलीफ फॉर्मेशन थ्योरी ऑफ द प्लेट टेक्टॉनिक्स फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द हिमालयन माउंटेन्स एंड द नादन प्लेन्स एंड द मेजर फिजोग्राफिक डिविजन्स द हिमालयाज नादन प्लेन्स पेनसुला प्लेट्यू इंडियन डेजर्ट कोस्टल प्लेन्स एंड आईलैंड so today we are going to discuss about the processes of relief formation the theory of plate tectonics and the formation of himalayan mountains let's have a look as we began with we will be first focusing on that how the relief has been formed relief formation in any place basically depends upon three criteria one is weathering second is erosion and third one is deposition now how these three terms are different when we talk about weathering we basically discuss about the breaking down of the rocks it can be because of wind water it can be because of animals ice glowing plants when these sediments break down they tend to get eroded now what is erosion the movement of the sediments from the broken rock so these rocks that are been broken due to weathering are been eroded that is they are moved from one region that is again it can be because of wind water ice or either gravity now when it has been eroded from one region it tends to get deposited in the another region right so what is deposition the dropping of the sediments in a new place for example you can see the formation of an island of sand dunes as you can see in the given picture so these three processes are interlinked now how are these three associated these three are basically associated with the theory of the plate tectonic now how is this plate tectonic theory important and what is so different about it the plate tectonic theory describes the large scale motion of the earth's lithosphere this theory is based on the continental drift theory what was the continental drift theory we will be talking about in the next slide basically the plate tectonic theory refers to the movement of the plates now which are these plates these plates are the lithospheric plates that we have just below the earth's crust and these plates are been continuously moving over the years and it's still moving today also now what are these plates doing to these plates lead to either the formation or the deformation of any kind of a relief on the earth's crust the movement of these plates have changed the position and the size of continents over the millions of years such movements have also influenced the evolution of the present landform features and reliefs of india so the plate tectonic theory depends upon three plate boundaries one is the convergent boundary in these boundaries the two plates converges or moves towards each other and they overlap for example himalayan mountains are basically been formed of these convergent boundary second one is the divergent boundary in the divergent boundary the plates move away from each other as the plates move away from each other it either leads to faulting or it leads to the magma from the core tends to come up on the earth's crust because of the gap created so that is a divergent boundary one very good example of divergent boundary can be the mid atlantic ridge yes the mid atlantic ridge is an s shaped hills in between the atlantic ocean it is even visible from the satellite so just go and google today the pictures of the mid atlantic ridge the third plate boundary talks about is the transform boundary in the transform boundary neither any kind of a formation nor any deformation takes place it is simply the sliding past of two plates against each other and mostly what does it lead to it leads to earthquakes one such very good example is the san andreas fault the san andreas fault is a transform boundary and is been continuously been moving so the places are been getting distant a bit inches every year and they're sliding past each other so the plate tectonic theory includes three of the plate boundaries one is the convergent boundary second is divergent boundary and the third one is the transform boundary now how have these three boundaries led to the formation of the continents in today's time 
Let's have a look. Continental drift theory is considered to be a hypothesis. Now what does it mean? Hypothesis refers to the data that is being collected out of certain evidences been available to us. Now what does this theory actually refers to? The theory goes back to a time of about 225 million years ago where it believes that all the continents in today's time that we have were joined together into one landmass that was known as Pangaea. Now what was this Pangaea actually? The overall land was called the Pangaea and the water around it was known as Panthalassa. Pangaea was a Latin word which means entire earth and Panthalassa meant entire water. Due to the movement of these plates, that is the conversion boundary, divergent boundary and transform boundary, the contents started to drift apart from each other. As you can see in the picture too, the Pangaea got divided into two main lands. The northern one was lower, known as Laurasia or Angara land and the southern one was known as the Gondwana land. So you can see the countries like South America, Africa, India, all these were being parts of the Gondwana land. Further, so you can see that how these continents started to move away from each other and the present day picture of the continents being away from each other is the formation because of these plates movement. So Pangaea about 200 and million years ago, before it started breaking, the southern portion was known as the Gondwana land and the northern one was known as Laurasia. So the theory was basically been derived by a scientist named Alfred Wegener. People initially did not believe their theory because they believed that nothing of the sort can be possible. So how was it been proved? Alfred Wegener tried to prove with a lot of evidences. The continental drift theory basically proved that the theory of the plate tectonics was actually true. There are several minor plates around the earth's crust and seven major plates which are been moving even in today's time. In the given world map you can see the highlighted plate boundaries with the help of the blue lines. The position of the continents is still moving at about the speed of a fingernails growth and it has been expected with the help of the satellites we have a proof and we have been confirmed that each year the Atlantic Ocean is getting a few inches wider. So the plate tectonic theory is still evidently going on leading to the formation or the deformation of the relief formation. To support the evidences of the continental drift theory, there were various types of evidences provided. Some common evidences can be, one is the continental fit. As you can see that the South American tip and Africa is a perfect fit. Similarly, the peninsula part of India was a perfect fit towards the edge of Africa. Second is the fossil formations. Fossils around South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, Australia are almost that was been found supposed to be similar. So the fossils of one animal was found in the other continent and the country as well. The third one was the mountain range. Mountains in South America and Antarctica are believed to be formed of the same mountain chain. There were several other evidences which proved that the continental theory was actually true and even has been acting in today's time. So how has this theory helped the formation? One such very good example you can actually correlate is the formation of Himalayas. How did it actually take place? This, the peninsula part of India was actually a part of the Gondwana land. Then how did India form? Peninsula India is a part of the ancient supercontinent Gondwana land. The conventional currents split the crust into a number of pieces thus leading to the drifting of the Indo-Australian plate. So this Indo-Australian plate got separated and started to move over the years towards the northern part of the Euro-Asian plate. The collision between the Indo-Australian plate and the Euro-Asian plate led to the sudden colliding of the plates and uplifting of land 
to form the mountains you can see how it basically is been moving and the movement of the southern part collided with the two plates due to this collision the sedimentary rocks which were been folded to form the mountain systems of western asia and himalayas and that is where the the due to the convergent boundaries two of the plates collided together and the land uplifted to form the himalayan mountains in today's time which is been evidently as the highest mountain peaks in india so that is where we are talking about the continental drift theory and also the plate tectonic theory leading to the formation and the deformation of various reliefs across the country thank you class